the light itself actually kills off the immune cells in our skin that are causing us to be itchy and inflamed. I would also love to expand more on the um, what you mentioned about uh, when people move from warmer climates to the States, they seem to do better than moving from colder climates. And I would love to know more about why this might be the reason. Yeah, so there's, there's actually a number of studies that have looked at this. And we, we published a study um, a few years back, about four or five years ago, in Journal of Investigative Dermatology that looked at the relationship between various climate factors and just the prevalence, you know, how common atopic dermatitis is in children in the United States. And what we found was that children who lived in, in states that had higher sun exposure, higher uh, humidity, um, and higher temperature, all were, had better protection, had lower rates of eczema compared to those who were living, let's say, in a Chicago where you're farther from the equator, so you're getting less ultraviolet exposure. You're, you know, it's cold and dry much of the year, and, uh, and that seems to be a risk factor. Now, the question is why? And it, there's probably a few reasons. So with ultraviolet light, um, that is something that in moderation can actually be very helpful for eczema. And in fact, one of the treatments that is used really globally is ultraviolet therapy or phototherapy as a treatment for atopic dermatitis. And there's different forms that are used around the world. Well, in fact, just getting some natural like sun exposure will accomplish the same effect. And so in folks who live outdoors or who live in areas that are warmer, less precipitation, they're able to go outdoors more, spend more outside time, get more natural sun exposure. That sun exposure, the ultraviolet exposure, has a what we call a photoimmunosuppressing effect. The light itself actually kills off the immune cells in our skin that are causing us to be itchy and inflamed, but it doesn't mess with our immune system internally. So it's something that we see as a benefit. Of course, as a dermatologist, I always have to throw the disclaimer in there, be very careful not to overdo the sun exposure, right? Because we don't want to get increased skin cancer risk, but that's a separate you know, concern. But humidity also is an important factor because this skin of eczema is dry to begin with. And now if you put it in a, in a, a region or an environment that is bone dry, that is going to really make the skin even more vulnerable to getting inflamed, itchier, et cetera. So one of the things that, that is often recommended by clinicians is to use things like indoor humidifiers to try to offset some of that indoor dryness when, there's a, you know, uh, when it's very dry and cold out. Um, so I think there's a lot of factors that tie together, but folks who live in areas where it's naturally quite warm, they're spending more time outdoors, getting more natural sun exposure, they're not facing the issues of intense dryness because there's more natural humidity all of that can be very good for the skin. Of course, all of this is in moderation. Like everything else in life, you know, it, uh, the best option is moderation because even in, in living in regions uh, where it tends to be more humid, well, that's good during the temperate times of year. But when it gets to the, you know, the hottest times of the summer, well, then the heat and humidity can be so bad that even that can flare up eczema as well. And so there's often this thought that the only environmental factor that's a problem for eczema is cold and dryness. And that's a big one. But actually, it turns out in many parts of the world, the most common trigger is actually heat and sweat. So, you know, there's a fine balance between, you know, getting enough humidity so that your skin is not dry um, or less dry, but not getting too much humidity that now you're just super itchy and uncomfortable. 